Chapter 111. Kuh. 111 Escape. I desperately roll chasing after the giant centipede. Although I lose in speed I am still faster using roll. Going my max is difficult as I lose my fine control. I don't know much about complicated terrain but I have the advantage in the open desert. However, I still won't make it in time. The giant centipede will destroy the carriage faster than me getting there. Well let's not think about anything unnecessary. Run, run, and run. I can't do anything other than keep chasing using roll. There's no helping it if I think of unnecessary things. The distance between the giant centipede and the carriage shrinks. When I thought that it was finished, the fire on the upper part of the carriage burned down the curtain that covered the rear which was used to conceal the contents of the carriage. The burnt cloth dances in the air and covers the head of the giant centipede. It was a miraculous position and timing. I thought that I could earn a little time with this, but I didn't even have a second. The cloth flies behind immediately. It did not disturb the giant centipede's running. I set my eyes into the now bare carriage. Inside, there it was packed with people riding. There were various people, from an elderly man to tiny girls who are not even ten. Everyone has beast ears on top of their heads. I remember the dog-eared girl who was beside the woman swordsman at that time in the cave. Besides the beast ears on their heads, it is a normal human being, but is he a beast person? It was the second time I've seen it so it did not surprise me. Everyone was wearing tattered cloths, I was worried that their hands were fitted in wooden boards. A fat man appeared behind the beast people. They wore a white cloth on their head and it has a gaudy appearance with gold decorations. It is clearly different from others. The fat man cried out something and kicked one of the beast people down. I did not know what to do for a moment. The kicked beast man falls from the carriage, strikes their back against the ground and convulses. The giant centipede slows down, opens its mouth, and eats the beast man who fell from the carriage. Beating another beast man trying to resist, they threw a small child to the giant centipede. Then one person after the next. After eight people were dropped, the giant centipede completely stopped. It began concentrating on eating the people who were dropped. In that gap, the carriage steadily escapes. The fat man laughed satisfactorily after wiping the sweat off their forehead and went back to the depths of the carriage. Cruel. It is too cruel. I understand that if you did not do it the entire carriage would be caught and everyone will be dead. Still, it's too terrible. Why is that guy laughing after leaving them to get eaten by the monster? By the time I caught up with the monster, less than half of the people had survived. Because they were thin, the body may have been weak in the first place. It seems that some of them died by being dropped from the running carriage. But for a moment I thought that it was good that they died from the drop instead. It's too terrible to be eaten while crying alive. Oh. Looking at the voice, it was a human being who had half of their body eaten and torn. Immediately the remaining upper body was also eaten by the giant centipede and disappeared. Gigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigigig
It shakes its big body again making the same motions as when it side-swept its tail. It's the second time I see this, but it still moves too fast. It was the counter move it used on me before, half my HP was taken last time. If I receive it again, I will surely lose consciousness. But it's unavoidable. I bang my tail at the body of the approaching giant centipede and fly back due to the shock. Still it cannot be avoided as the centipede's body approaches. I try to reduce the power by turning my wings forward and guarding against it. Although I was splendidly sent flying into the air the damage was minimized. I use the momentum and escape flying into the air. I return my wings which were used to guard, to the back and flap them increasing the distance. Anyway I escaped. It's impossible to do any more. As I flew away, I sensed that my neck was being pulled so I looked back. Red light was gathering at the mouth of the giant centipede. Was it going to shoot again? Scorching flame is out. The person in my mouth would be burnt to death by the flame. It's the person who the last of the seven left their last moments for. Although I am seized by a feeling of helplessness by looking at the corpse, I cannot afford to immerse in this sentiment. After checking the status of the giant centipede, it seemed that the damage hardly got through. However, its MP consumption is surprisingly large. The way it looks, it can only use heat ray three times a day. That's why it did not use it to hunt the carriage and chased after it instead. However, I can't rely on this information. Because I will have to avoid it while flying. I fly up while keeping the giant centipede in sight. For me who was in the sky far away, the giant centipede released its heat ray. I turned my face downward at a stretch and nosedived. Even though I had taken quite a distance from it, heat ray still passed just a little above me. The range is stupidly long. LV of title skill, evasion king, went up from 1 to 2. A message floats in my head again. Fortunately, the giant centipede did not follow. I could not fly for a long time, but since I descended in order to avoid heat ray, I decided to get to the ground soon. I would have probably been killed if its third shot chased after me. It probably only took me for a delinquent who stole its food and ran away. LV of title skill, spirit relief, went up from 5 to 6. The acquisition condition of the white magic system has reduced. I looked behind once again. Then I rounded my body using roll and moved towards the direction of the moon. Chapter 112 Kuh -huh. 112 Ferris Huma With the beast man still in my mouth, I use roll and search for the ball rabbit. Although I ran quite a bit I still vaguely remember where I parted from the ball rabbit. The two cacti I crushed for the ball rabbit before going to bed should serve as a marker. I have to find the ball rabbit as soon as possible. If I lose sight of it for too long, it could possibly become prey for another monster. Besides, the beast man I helped earlier although did not receive a direct attack from the giant centipede, they did get injured after being dropped from the running carriage. The one who dropped before seemed to act like a cushion, so the injury was light in comparison, but the drop in HP was great. Originally, it seems they did not spend a very good life, as the body was brittle. Also, they received abnormal conditions, coma, bloodshed, and the HP is decreasing. Nina Nyawa. Race, Ferris Huma. State, coma, bloodshed. LV, 7 sixtieths. HP, 8 twenty fifths. Mepe, 22 22. Attack, 21. Defense, 18. Mana, 2 jubilas. Speed, 25. Characteristic skill. Present Sense, LV1, Night Vision, LV1. Dynamic Vision, LV2, Girisha Language, LV3. Resistance Skill. Hunger Resistance, LV3, Poison Resistance, LV1. Physical Resistance, LV2. Normal Skill. Bite, LV1, Scratch, LV1. Squeal, LV2, Bind, LV1. Title Skill. Beast Man, LV, Hunter, LV2. Acrobatics, LV2, Slave, LV. This beast man seems to be called Nina. Race Beferis Huma? Even though it's a beast man, the race is different from the one who was beside that female swordsman in the cave. If I'm not mistaken, the girl with the hammer was a Canis Huma? They had the same beast ears, but I think that they had dog ears. On the other hand, Nina's was more like a cat's. Slave, this is that right? Slavery. They wore tattered clothes and it's impossible to say that they lived a true life due to their position. But, this was still somewhat of a shock, getting to know like this. All the other beast man packed in that carriage were probably also slaves. 
I wonder if the parents sold them due to economic distress? I find a familiar lump and stop roll. A mountain of cactus remains could be seen at a distance. There is no doubt, this is where I parted with the ball rabbit. It was still there sleeping after I had woken up. Yet, there is a small hole in the place where the ball rabbit was supposed to be buried. Looks like it already woke up and crawled out. I could not see any traces of the ball rabbit dragging their body, as it was erased by a sandstorm. Worried, I wasn't even able to move my foot at all. While praying that it was nearby, I use present sense and check the surroundings. From the wreckage of the cactus, there was sign of a small animal. Though I am glad it stayed close by, what is he doing? I hunt for the ball rabbit through the cactus wreckage. There was the figure of the ball rabbit with cactus spines scratching at its back. Really what is he doing? When the ball rabbit notices a sound, it extends its ears vertically and looks back at me. Pefew? Pefew! The ball rabbit spat out the skin of the cactus and came straight at me. Then it attacks my feet and legs again with its ears. Maybe he was angry being left behind. I move away from the cactus and spit out the beast man who was in my mouth along with the sand. I have a coughing fit trying to get all the sand out of my throat. Pefew? After seeing Nina, the ball rabbit turns its gaze towards me. I then turn my eyes towards Nina and stick my tongue out making a lick motion. I then lightly poke the ball rabbit with my finger. Pefew! This guy does it eat humans? I am fine with eating a panther and a camel, but I won't eat a human being who used to be the same kind as me. Although there is no real reason for it, please refrain from it ball rabbit. I won't give you a ride on top of my head anymore if you do so. I convey the situation to the ball rabbit with a gesture. I point at the bleeding beast man and waved my hands left and right. The ball rabbit should have learned the skill rest after gaining the experience from the camel. With that, Nina's bleeding could be stopped. Other than bleeding there is no other danger to her life. The ball rabbit gazes at Nina and then lifts the fragments of the cactus with his ears. It then starts drawing a picture on the sand as if it were chalk. After finishing drawing it throws the cactus skin far and hangs its ears to the ground as if nothing happened. Ball rabbit, were you always able to do that? Although the picture was bad, I immediately understood what the picture was. It is definitely a picture of meat. I nod in understanding. Understood, understood, when I find meat again I will salt and cook it. When the ball rabbit saw me, it moved happily to Nina's side and cried pefew. A small light jumps out of the ball rabbit's head and enters Nina's body. From what I could see the wounds are closing and the pale skin begins regaining its life. Checking the status, abnormal condition, bloodshed, was lost and the HP was slowly recovering, although not completely. After breathing a breath of relief, coma, turned into coma, small. The relief I felt slowly changes into anxiousness. What should I do when Nina wakes up? The way I see it, there is no doubt that she will scream and try to run away. If she walks alone in this desert then she will surely die. Should I send her to that city surrounded by that high wall before she wakes up? No, I won't have any time. It seems she will get up soon. In the first place, is it even okay to take her there? Thinking about the direction, the carriage should have also left from that city. That fat guy who kicked all those slaves out to be food for the giant centipede should have also come from there. Chapter 113 Kuh <laughs> 113 Conversation Ooh, ooh. Nya. The beats man Nina groans in a low voice. She stiffens and turns her body on the sand. She has not gotten up yet, but it was only a matter of time. What do I want to do, what should I do? If I stay she will probably faint in fear. Should I hide and leave it to the ball rabbit? Even if I can't decide I still have to make sure I take her someplace. When I think about it I can't keep hidden forever. She will surely become a monster's prey once she wakes up and I leave her here in the desert. After all, I'll have to manage somehow. I have to appeal that there is no hostility with all my power. I'll try looking as foolish as possible. Somebody that looks like they can't do any harm should be fine, right? Well, I'll do it anyway. So what should I do? Should I have the ball rabbit dig a hole and bury my head until Nina wakes up? N. W. A. Nya. Nina stifles in a low voice again. She lifts her arms and moves her bangs to the left and right with the back of her hands. Oh, looks like she is already getting up. Something anything. Oh, how about a human transformation technique? Thanks to the evolution it's now at LV3. This should be of decent quality now. I take a deep breath and calm myself. This is pretty tough. 
My body is forcibly compressed and HP, attack power and my defense are greatly reduced. Adding to that, my MP consumption is now 1 per second? Let's see, so now my status is. I rush ya. Race, Evil Plague Dragon. State, Normal. LV, 2275. HP, 260-260. Mepe, So I have 199 seconds? 199 seconds, that's 3 minutes and 19 seconds. Isn't this really small? No, I should be good. I'll have 19 seconds to spare if I had decided to make a cup of noodles. In these 199 seconds I will appeal that I am harmless and listen to Nina's circumstances. I should be able to do it, no, I can do it. I saw that Nina's eyes had opened. I only had a limited time use of human transformation technique. An intense heat attacks my body. It feels like my body is melting and withering due to the heat. This is the third time I felt this. The first time was a bitter experience and I wanted to avoid it. But now that I don't feel so evil it should be better. Or so I thought, but it's hot and it's still painful. My body gradually got smaller and my total length which was 5 meters went down to just a little over 2 meters. I open my eyes and see my arms. There, I see a robust arm with black scales. The sharp nails are also in good health. It's nice to be strong, but right now I'm just like a demon humanoid. Maybe, I look pretty bad I guess. It's a shame that I can't see myself as it's making me uneasy. It will appear awkward if I am turned completely into a human and am not wearing any clothes. No, actually, I think that will be better than looking like my present demon self. Pefu? The ball rabbit squeals loudly and his ears turn perpendicular as he quickly takes some distance from me. Hey, stop that. With that kind of reaction I'll lose the confidence to win Nina's trust with this form. Ha, huh, as expected, isn't this more frightening than a dragon? It has the shape of a human, but the mouth is lined with fangs. Well, even if I want to just shrink away right now. I only have three minutes in this form, and in those three minutes I have to win the trust of Nina. As I looked towards Nina, she closed her eyes and laid back on the sand. Oh, why did close your eyes? Perhaps you lost consciousness again? Well, it was a pretty tiresome situation, so if the body is still tried then it can't be helped. But if you do that I'll be in trouble. After changing, my MP is steadily decreasing and it'll return to my original form if this keeps up. If my MP is exhausted then I will not be able to talk. This may be bad for her, but let's get you up. I take care not to use my nails as I brace her shoulder and hold her up as I shake her body slowly. Well, now how's my voice? Gue a a a a a i a 3 i V. V. O. Good. It seems my vocal cords are now closer to that of humans. If this is the case, then a conversation could be established. But what should I say? I don't have anything to talk about. Should I say, I am not a bad dragon, like in a certain RPG? O O G O V. A O K I V U L. It was a little hard at first. But I gradually got the hang of it. You will? Nina sharply looks my way. When she saw me her face was dyed blue. Oh ah. Uh. Because of the fear, it seems her voice had trouble getting out. Nina opens her cat eyes wide open and moves her mouth opened and closed a few times. Then, after all, this form seems no good, would the dragon be better? No, I'll go on, besides I can still reverse it. Wait a while, Nina, Nina, is not tasty. As I thought, it's strange since I'm still a dragon. Nina feebly tries to escape from my arms. I gently let go of her and take a step back. Well, how many seconds are left? I rush ya. Race, Evil Plague Dragon. State, Humanized LV, 3. LV, 2275. HP, 130 260. Mepe, no osuta no I've already lost half. After 97 seconds, 1 minute and 37 seconds. I've already given up on understanding her circumstances, for now let's gain her trust. Oh, that's right, what if I prepared food? There is no doubt that she's hungry seeing that thin body. Also, it is doubtful you received precious water in this desert while in that carriage, so you must be thirsty. I should have prepared the cactus beforehand, I'm such a fool. What do I do? The remains of the cactus are scattered from the time I made food for the ball rabbit. The ball rabbit is soft and its meat should be tasty, it wouldn't be bad to cook him. It looks delicious. 
Wait, now's not the time to be thinking of that. Anyway, I have to appeal that there's no hostility. Procuring food can be done even after human transformation technique has run out. Chapter 114 Kuh. 114 Beast Man Nina So what should I do? I have to somehow convey that I'm not hostile in less than a minute. If I turn back into a dragon now then I would have transformed into a human for nothing. Oh, maybe should I dance? Maybe doing a dance will appeal to her. But if I dance for a whole minute it won't feel right. She'll probably think it was some kind of curse or something. Bah! Hinya! Listening to my hoarse voice, Nina shudders and her body trembles. Oh, it's no use, even my voice is no good. I lightly poke my throat. Please work my vocal cords, it'll depend on you, I'm counting on you. But I really don't have much time. Three minutes is really short. But if I had three more minutes I could do something about it. If this keeps up I will turn back into a dragon without having accomplished anything. It's painful being deprived of your voice as appearance doesn't really make much of a difference at this point. Anyway, just think of what I want to say for now. Even if I say I came to help, I won't be able to trust it if I look like this. Seeing my body, I feel like I'm some sort of devil. In normal circumstances I should not be the type to help people. I look more like someone who would laugh while eating humans. I need to say something to make up for this appearance, something like, actually, am a human being like you? No, it sounds suspicious. I will definitely run away if a monster approaches while saying such a thing. It needs to be brief and it has to convince her right now, that is unreasonable. While I'm thinking my MP is slowly decreasing. Anyway, I just have to say what I honestly mean to convey without hesitation. There is no longer any time to think. Vuo, me, monster, ua, a, turn, human, original. Okay good. I tried to put it together forcibly, but it instead might have been taken as a misunderstanding from the flow of it. But I did not tell a lie. When I think about it, in this world there might not even be a word such as human being. It's a small worry, yeah. Nina looked at me with fearful eyes and blinked twice. Uh, let's see, in the past, was there a human being? Nina. It's so? It's good, this is good. I'll be able to overcome this if it's like this. I? Not dangerous. Safe place. I take you to place. We're live. I feel that my body is starting to grow a little. At the same time, a fierce sense of fatigue attacks my body. Oh, are the three minutes up already? At least let me finish. Status, status check. I rush ya. Race, evil plague dragon. State, normal. LV, 2275. HP, 130 slash 260. Mepe, patruto suta no zechino. Wow, it already reached the time limit. Just a bit more, at least let me have 10 more seconds. At least tell me where it is I should take you. To try to keep my human figure even for a little bit longer, I am again squeezing out magical power from my body. Auto MP recovery, if I had that, then maybe I could keep my human form longer. Normal skill, human transformation technique, LV increased from 3 to 4? That's not what I wanted. Even if the skill LV goes up now it doesn't matter. But I'm a little happy. With skill LV4, I would actually feel more like a human soon one I? But even if the skill LV goes up, my problem hasn't been solved. My body is still expanding. Also, since my MP is almost drained, my body feels heavy. My consciousness is in danger, my head is a little dizzy. My skin started to get harder and harder, and my fangs and nails started to grow. I'll be back to my original form in no time. Hinya? Nina looks up at me who turned into a dragon and opens her eyes wide while edging back. Seems that she was unable to remain standing due to fatigue so she sat down in place. Even if I didn't scare you that far, will I still be able to recover? Everything I said was as a demon before I changed back. Although, I never did mention I was a dragon. In order to appeal my non-hostility, I lay my belly on the ground and lower my head bowing down. Fortunately, after my actions, the ball rabbit who was watching our exchange from a distance approached me in a joyful manner. It climbed on top of my head, fixed its position and let out a small gpefu, as if relieved. It seems that the wariness it had of me a while ago due to my form has worn off after having watched me. But, the humanization has now run out? Since it's already like this, I have to somehow persuade her with hand gestures or some kind of gesture. This desert is too dangerous for Nina to walk alone, she won't even be able to beat the leopard. 
Gur Gua. I called out to Nina, but there is no response. I thought it was strange so I approached and stretched my neck. This girl, did she lose consciousness due to fear? Was it really that shocking that I suddenly became a dragon? Because, my MP became empty I am also in danger of losing consciousness. An intense sleepiness and feeling of exhaustion attacks my body. My body is strangely heavy. The next time I use a human transformation technique, I should be more careful, even if I feel I am able to hold out. I fell asleep slowly while feeling the ball rabbit lying on top of my head. Chapter 115 Kuh. 115 Tale of a Certain Brave Man Side Story The Desert Land Halanir There are many monsters and few resources, this is originally an inconvenient place to live. But with the help of excellent magicians, numerous guardian amulets and support from other places, it was finally established. Because of various reasons, this country is protected, it is believed that this is a sacred place and the brave are born here. I was born as a brave man here 18 years ago. When I was born I was brought here to a church where I grew up. I do not know my parents' name and the name I have now was given to me by a priest. But I do not mind. It does not matter. Because the priest's tongue slipped, I came to know that I was the eldest born of a poor family. When I learned of it, I thought it was good that I was born as a brave man. The difference between the rich and the poor here is great. This is because most of the priests monopolize supplies from other places. Also, because it is surrounded by the desert where dangerous monsters emerge, it is impossible to find another place to work. I'm absolutely sorry for the poor families in such a place. It's just a waste being born. As for me, I can safely walk alone in the desert with God's protection. Just a while ago I met with a stupid slave trader who was lamenting over the fact that he had to cross the desert to deliver his products only to be attacked by demons. It seems that he certainly had a good horse, but something to that extent will not be able to shake off the desert monsters. There are routes with few monsters, but in order to pass there you have to go through the country which has abolished beast slaves. You cannot pass such a place with a slave. I had traveled around the world on the day I turned 14 according to tradition. Although I have seen some terrible countries, it is not easy to corrupt Halanir if you have only corrupted the upper echelon. Still it is my tradition that I will visit Halanir if I'm nearby. Hero. The rumored hero has returned. Look at that brave figure. Just by walking, I could feel the eyes of envy from the surroundings. I feel good when I think of the poor and weak around me, while laughing in my mind. Although the reason I'm staying here is for a different purpose. I smile and wave my hand to react to the beggars. I go ahead through the town disregarding the noisy monkeys. After all it is good here. In other places, my name isn't that widespread. Um, excuse me, I, I want to have a talk with Hirosama. Because there was a girl who came running in from the side to stand in front of me, I stopped my feet. A woman who seems to be her mother comes out later half laughing, saying, I'm sorry, this girl, while pulling the girl's hand, but the girl resists it. I unintentionally laugh while looking at the situation. I touch the mother's hand and have her separate from the girl. I then kicked the stomach of the girl, who now showed shuffled facial expressions. The surrounding goes silent and confusion appears in everyone's eyes. I unintentionally got carried away. I dislike having my way blocked by a stupid brat. If this matter spreads, my reputation may get hurt, but it will be alright. Putting me in a bad mood, who is the symbol of this country, can be said to be the same as committing treason towards the church. This won't spread through the public. If you are not on the church's side, you are a criminal. In Halanir, the maintenance of peace and security is under the jurisdiction of the church. Because there is something that must be done here, I've been staying in the Camp Helena for quite some time. Normally civilians are not allowed to enter this camp. Even officials need to go through nominal procedures. One can hardly get past the gate guards, but only I can get in here freely with a face pass. I walk the corridor of the camp while watching the guards hurriedly lower their heads, I then stop in front of a certain jail cell. Long time no see night chief Adolfo. No, should I say former night chief? I look at the person sitting in the depths of the cell with a smile on his face. A man with a big solid body stares at me from the intersection of the lattice. This is pretty serious. It is suspected that the fiancé and the younger brother were killed. Adolfo was stripped of his name and rank as night chief, with the crime of homicide and was imprisoned. Recently the problems raised by the monopoly over the support supplies by the church took up most of their time. So fortunately he was sent to prison without proper investigation. That priest is such a guy. 
Oh, did you only come here to laugh at me? Adolfo said in a low voice. I am usually a man who has more words to say, but I do not have that kind of margin right now. Anyone would get angry if there was infidelity between their fiancé and younger brother. This would make them angry enough to take up their sword and murder their relative and fiancé. I hate it, even I wouldn't do such a thing. In the old days I used to do various things, but I was immature, self-centered and arrogant. I have reflected on it, and to this day I am sorry that I could not apologize. But you are a knight. When I said such things Adolfo shows a painful distressed face. It is a good expression. I believe that Adolfo's accusation is false. Because my eyes can distinguish the right from the wrong in a person. To be precise, I can only roughly judge to a degree. But it is a custom to be able to see through the right and wrong of the person. In that way it could become rather convenient. Stop with your kindness. Adolfo. I can do without humbling myself to such a degree. Certainly my position may have been lost, but I, uh, Adolfo. I feel that my eyebrows unintentionally wrinkle my forehead. I put a hand over my eyes and laugh. It seems that it has been rough. But I understand. I guess let's decide what to do next. With such a case, I negotiated with the priest, so for would you like to be released? Such a thing cannot be done. First of all, I was set up by that fellow. Adofu. I understand your suspicions, but the priest will not do such a thing. Also, the priest actually said that if I were to accompany you, you will be free to do as you like for one day. Is that true? However, what can be done in a single day? Adofu. We will earn achievements and restore your trust. Then I will extend the period and search for the real culprit. Is that possible to do? But to earn achievements so conveniently, eh, Adofu? I touch my mouth and hide my laughter. As usual, he is a simple man. That aspect has not changed since four years ago. Actually, it seems that a merchant's carriage was attacked by a darkness dragon. There's a rumor that it is actually an evil plague dragon. If that is true, and it's left alone, it may come to spread disaster to Halanir. I heard that the church is now organizing an investigation team. I also do not know if the rumor is true or not. Adofa's place will change greatly if you were to defeat the dragon in the vicinity of Helena. If that were to happen, you should be able to deal with the matter of reinvestigating the incident and appeal your case towards the guards. Adofa stands up, swallows and spits. I turn my back on the cell. Since only I am allowed to go through here. I will go and make a report. Hey, Irushia. Adofa calls my name. For my doubt, I am sorry. I thank you for this matter, truly. No, it's nothing as I must do the right thing as I am a brave man. Now that I'm done here, I turn around and leave the prison. I could not keep facing Adofu as I could not help but leak out a laugh. For years ago, I had a practice duel with Adofu at the end of the rainy season. There in front of the masses, I was beaten and put to shame. There is not a single day where I forget that humiliation that was sung preaches from above. It is the biggest blemish of my life. Just letting him be executed like this is boring. I will not be satisfied until I had stolen everything from this man. I will make sure you are properly humiliated, I'll let Adofa die in regret and resentment. Because you defied me, it must be done. Chapter 116 Kuhu. 116 Huge Cactus When I woke up from having my MP emptied, the surroundings were already dark. The ball rabbit seemed to have protected me and Nina while we were asleep yesterday. But it did not dive into the ground. I searched the surroundings, stretching my ears so that I will be able to hear even a pin drop. The ball rabbit who saw me get up was relieved and leaked out a small breath with a puhi, it then dug a hole in the ground and went in. Somehow it sounded like a proud elated voice, but I was concerned as there was no longer any power in the voice. Looks like it was desperately looking out for me and Nina while we slept. Ordinarily, I'm confident that I'll get up as soon as a dangerous monster came. But since my MP was empty I slept deep and soundly. I felt ashamed, since a little while ago I thought of serving up the ball rabbit as food. Let's fetch something delicious this time. Because of my dragon scales, I do not know how long we can stay together. Since I slept enough, my eyes were clear. Let's get up and do what we can. When I sat down, I heard Nina's painful groaning voice. She did not seem to get up. After observing for a while, I thought that maybe it was the lack of water, so I rummaged through the cactus wreckage. Most of them were eaten or dried up being exposed to the sunlight. But miraculously, there were some debris which was not exposed to the sunlight. 
In those places the watery cactus had remained. I bring the cactus peel to the vicinity of Nina's face, squeeze it, and have the water drip into her mouth. Since it will be painful if a lot pours out at once, I pour it little by little. Nina's groan subsided, but it is doubtful whether she was able to drink it properly. I thought that it may be difficult to lie on the sand, so I gathered the skin of the cactus and laid it under Nina. It will be a little sticky but it will be better than laying on sand. Maybe. The morning came and the ball rabbit eventually crawled out of the ground. It shakes its head to get rid of the sand. Even if the ball rabbit got up, Nina didn't. She is breathing, but her physical condition may not be so well. Because of malnutrition and sunlight, the physical decrease in strength will be intense. Even before this, she did not eat very well, and this dry air also cannot be good for her. Right now Nina needs nourishment and water. Around here there are only the remnants of what the ball rabbit and I have eaten. The cactus skin is also almost dry, and there is nothing left around with enough water. If I had known this would be the case, I would have left a bit more. First of all, let's try looking for something to eat before Nina gets up. Nina will be hungry and I feel bad that I don't have anything to feed her. This will be the best for me to gain trust. I also started having feelings of attachment towards that cactus-eating ball rabbit. Is it because that fellow is particularly easy to get along with? Shall I have the ball rabbit watch Nina while I search? The ball rabbit as it is now can handle F and about E rank monsters. However it would be impossible if the opponent was of rank D or higher. If it's something like that, I'll turn my attention on returning as soon as possible and dealing with the approaching monster. Then, it will be impossible to surrender and leave. Looking around, it is vacant so I could see far, but there is also a limit to my eyesight. For now I'll leave the sleeping Nina to the ball rabbit and I run in the desert. Although I am a little worried leaving Nina with the ball rabbit, well even if it's a small insect monster, it should be able to drive it away. But as long as I'm within range to notice a bigger monster's approach, I'll be able to do something about it. I wish there was something convenient to eat nearby. I wonder if a camel's hump is enough? It should contain fat and water. Should I look for some water first? At this rate Nina will die from the lack of water. Although I could prolong her life at the ball rabbit's rest, it wouldn't be a very good thing. Also, seawater is out of the question due to the large amounts of salt. However, if I recall there is a way to make seawater drinkable. It's in the corner of my mind, a memory of my past life. First I boil the seawater and collect the steam in a separate container as it cools. It is a form of distillation that works by extracting the ingredients using the difference in boiling points. But that's not very realistic right now. I could boil the water just fine, but cooling it would be a problem. I could try burying it and then covering it with fur, but drinking from such a hole would be bad for humans I believe. I don't think that the countries and towns of this world are very hygienic as compared to the Japanese. But unlike me and other monsters, the humans don't have that many antibodies. I can't let her drink water from a beast's fur. Well, anyway, it's either a camel or a cactus. They both can supply both food and water. But after running for a while I could not find a camel, and the cactus was also not showing up. She may also be weak because she was rolling around in my mouth while we were trying to escape from the giant centipede. Even if I were to move her carefully on my back there will still be some shaking and there is also the possibility of her dropping. I thought it would be better to take her with me so that I don't go too far after she recovers a bit. That way I don't have to take what I gather back or else I would have to leave it there and leaving it makes me uneasy. Would it be better to take her with my wings? It will be a little difficult fighting monsters in that state but I feel I could manage somehow if it was just cactus. But forcibly using my wings would consume a lot of strength. Also, moving about with my wings would expose my dragon scales. I just feel uneasy leaving it to the ball rabbit. I am anxious taking my eyes off of that fellow. He will be able to take care of insects, he's quick and good at concealing. But that guy don't eat Nina, okay? I run while looking to my back frequently. I could see that the ball rabbit is shrinking in the distance. It's good that I could still see them in the distance due to it being free of grass and trees, but wouldn't it be useless if I can't make it in time? After looking towards the distance, it seems this area is the limit. The ball rabbit looked at me, he was using his ears to fling the sand towards my direction. I glanced back a few times irritated for some reason. Certainly if I think of Nina's condition I should find food and water quickly. I guess there's no helping it that I get this nagging feeling thinking about it. Is it to utterly destroy or dash to pieces? Well either way keep protecting Nina and begging you ball rabbit. 
I use roll and leave behind the ball rabbit and Nina in the distance. I'm concerned, but for now I should first find food and water. It's either cactus or camel. Come on, cactus or camel. A cactus or camel. As long as the centipede doesn't come, seriously, I don't feel like going face to face with it anytime soon. While rolling for a while, I saw a green lump. This desert plant should be a cactus. It's here, the cactus came. I'm glad I found it early. I have to quickly take it and head back. While thinking of heading back quickly, I realize that it's not a large amount. Thinking about Nina and the ball rabbit's needs, this much is not enough for the ball rabbit. Well, the ball rabbit will be fine. I'm eating as much as I usually do so there should be some room in me as well. Considering he's the dessert idol, I should go on a diet. Even if I eat and eat my body shape will not change. I keep rolling towards the green lump. At first I thought that my perspective was going crazy. Because I'm rolling my senses dull a bit, so I thought that it was just an effect of it. But after a bit I started to realize that since there was nothing to compare its size to, my perspective may have been a bit off. After approaching to a certain extent, I found out that the cactus was actually about 4 meters. There was a huge cactus lying on the floor like a caterpillar. It was probably a little smaller than me. Even though I was a bit too far off to see properly, my guess should still be within 2 meters at most, and this is accounting for inflation. Even if I can't bring back the whole thing while using roll, just a small part should be good. It would be better to bring both Nina and the ball rabbit here as there is quite the amount. There shouldn't be many like it. I started to slow down as I got closer, the cactus mass then shocked slowly and unnaturally, then it got up. Chapter 117 Kuh. 117 Wildthorn Child. The cactus moves and a head extends from it. I suddenly braked and cancelled my roll. This guy is not just a cactus. It is a mass of green with a fattened body and full of needles. It was a cactus but it had the shape of a camel. If trying to decide which one it was, then it was both, the cactus camel has arrived. Besides, it's not just a camel. Its full length is about 4 meters. There are small holes where its eyes should be, but the mouth is big. Whenever the cactus camel opened its mouth, a sticky green thread of liquid would come out. Hmm, I feel uncomfortable. Well first of all, I want to check this guy's stats. Cactus Terfilios, C-rank monster, living for 500 years, Cactus Terpupa, gains powerful magical power and establishes a self before long. Terfilios means wild thorn child, to support its own weight, it has four legs, and because it endlessly absorbs water there are several lumps on its back. Its figure resembles that of a camel. Its body surface has been strengthened by magical power, and its needles are very hard. It pretends to be a normal plant but it then eats approaching monsters after weakening them with its magic. Is that the evolution system of the cactus? See rank, even with such a look is it really equivalent to the little rock dragon? It seems this may not be a very good opponent to take on. Race, Cactus Terfilios. State, Normal. LV, 46 fiftieths. HP, 308-308. Mepe, Osuto Obzechichinch Osuto Obzechichinch. Attack, 120. Defense, 198. Mana, Duaratu Sapulu. Speed, 56. Rank, C. Characteristic skill. Earth attribute, LV, photosynthesis, LV, water storage, LV6, needle armor, LV5, automatic HP recovery, LV3, automatic MP recovery, LV3. Resistant skill. Drought tolerance, LV4, thermal resistance, LV5, physical resistance, LV3, magic resistance, LV4. Normal skill. Mirage, LV4, Digestive Juice, LV3, Clay, LV5, Weak, LV3, Iron Maiden, LV6, Bite, LV2, Thousand Needles, LV2, Sand Breath, LV1, Sandstorm, LV3. Title Skill. Son of Plant God, LV, Longevity, LV2. Its LV is high? It's probably good for earning experience, but it's not a good opponent if I want to eat it. First of all, its HP, MP and mana are better than mine. I want to shy away, but if I miss this chance I don't know when something as rich in water as this will come. It will be safe to leave the ball rabbit and Nina alone for now. Well, I guess I should be able to manage. Its attack power is low and its movement seems dull. Attack power and speed are important in battle. It's what I've learned through my experience so far. Even if the defense is high, if your attack can't hit it doesn't count. 
they will wear out and magic could only provide a bit of support against an experienced fighter. All right then, after a long time, I will have you raise my LV. I glance at the needle camel from a distance. The needle camel stands up on its four legs and turns its socket eyes towards me. The other side also stiffens and doesn't move an inch. It seems it wants to see how I move. I guess it's no fool and instead of giving up it wants to face me here. I'd like to take care of it from a long distance but I would ruin the precious water if I use scorching breath. If it's like this then there is only one thing I could try. But I have not used it in a while. I gather magic power on both of my wings and strike forward with a flap. It's the skill, Kemitashi, which cuts enemies with wind blades. The wind blades bounce off the surface of the needle camel. It went unscathed this time, but if I were to hit it again on the same spot it could scratch it, a third could break its needles and the fourth will scrape off its body. Normal skill, Kemitashi, LV increased from 1 to 2. Oh, look skill LV went up. A sharper wind blade storm pours down onto the needle camel. The needle camel crouches down and protects its head. Even seeing this I still won't stop my wings. Instead I strengthen the momentum, sharpen the aim, and I steadily hit the needle camel's body. Go. Keep battering him over and over. I will pour in all of the magic I got. Is this not working? I used this on the little rock dragon before, but was I underestimating my opponent? Even though the Ikemitashi got stronger. The needle camel didn't move but I also didn't let it get close to me by running around. I will somehow win if I can just keep on hitting him with Kemitashi. I stopped after using about half my MP and did not move an inch. I look at the needle camel after I stopped using Kemitashi, should I check its status? Cannot find target. Eh? I remember the last time I saw this message. It was that time when I was chasing the panther. At that time I chased after a hallucination and collided with a rock. It must have been its normal skill, mirage? That needle camel also had mirage? The figure of the needle camel disappears only to leave fragments which I happen to scrape off with a kemitashi left on the sand. Apparently, while I was bombarding it with my wind blades, it snuck out of the wind hell using mirage. From the number of fragments scattered about, I couldn't help but feel that it was a waste not being able to use what was lost. Looking about, I noticed that there is a high possibility that the needle camel is hiding in wait. Where would it come from? No, I don't have the time to think, I should start moving as it could come from anywhere. I kick the ground and fly into the sky. Just then, the back of my knee was pierced by a big needle. I fail to avoid it as my judgment was delayed. Is it going to shoot another needle? Apparently the needle camel showed me a hallucination at some point in time and used that time to go around to my back. I managed to stay in the air while still in pain. Ah, my leg hurts. It's pretty powerful even with such a status. Although there isn't much damage, it's not an amount I can just ignore. Although it may have been a thin part of my scales, it wanted to penetrate my body. Do you have any special characteristics like that of the slime? Why can't this be easy? Even if you try it, I won't be fooled by it, Mirage again. That hallucination is difficult to deal with but there are plenty of faults. The trick to it is awkward but quite difficult. But, I should be able to notice immediately if I concentrate. It's time to push forward and make it food. Chapter 118 Kuh. 118 Mirage I shoot Kemitashi with my wing while floating in the air. The air blades are definitely scraping the needle camel's surface. From the scooped out body, a viscous liquid like that of a cactus drips and a sweet smell drifts. Even if I'm fighting, my mouth was still salivating. The needle camel glares at me with its empty sockets while still in its defending posture. The needle camel seems to be in a difficult position. But there is no reason to get closer. Its HP will still decrease even from afar. Looking at the exhausted needle camel, it dissolves its defensive posture and stands up. The surrounding sand starts to roll up around the needle camel so as to fit it. Is this the sandstorm a skill? Well if it is it's not that intense. I can somehow still find my way if it's like this. It seems that it used a mirage just when the visibility was getting worse. Should I continuously use status check? I know it will use up my MP but... I know it's a little cheap to do so, but it won't be able to deceive my status check. That way I can judge whether it's genuine or not. Ah, uh, blindly shooting off a Kemitashi is a pretty big burden on the wings. Needless to say, they have both been overworked. I'd better get down soon. I use a status check to check whether the needle camel is real as I drop my altitude. At that moment, a strange sound came from below. 
I have a bad feeling and quickly fall down while twisting. A pointed sand pillar extends right past me. Immediately after, the pillars of sand broke down and collapsed, making the sandstorm darker. Because I had forcibly changed my trajectory, my posture collapsed as I fell. I forcibly adjust the direction of my body with the roll and beat my tail on the ground to kill the impact of the land. I kick the ground as it is and fly backwards to take a distance from the needle camel. Oh, is that it? Does it manipulate the sand and solidify it? I guess this is the clay a skill. Certainly the clay bear had the same skill. Even if it's the same, the needle camels is far bigger. That guy the sand column made using clay was hidden with the mirage and it was done with the help of a sandstorm. Sandstorm not only reduced visibility it also obstructed my auditory sense. I did not notice the sound of the sand pillar approaching. High magical power is dangerous after all. Disregarding myself, I really haven't confronted the magic type. Thinking back, it seems that there were only muscle brain types in the forest, excluding the black lizard. I don't want to get too close to the needle camel, I will just take my time scraping away at it from a distance. I don't want to hit it myself since its skin is covered in needles. The momentum will weaken and it won't give much damage. As long as its HP is steadily decreasing, I can continue using Kamataiki as is. Trying to flap my wings to fly, I hear something cutting the wind flying towards me. I guard with my wings and three needles pierced it, sticking to it. It probably shot while hiding it with the mirage. I won't be able to see something so thin. Is it getting desperate and decided to hunt instead? I have to avoid this long distance attack, but the sandstorm is making it difficult to pick up the sound. I can only rely on sight. Oh. I twisted my body to avoid the needle that flew towards my neck. The other needle moved and I was stuck on my chest. Whoa. Wait. I just barely decided that I was going to once again believe in my vision. To see it, I will avoid it using the sky's reflection. But what if I close my eyes as soon as this happens? I might be misled. If I can't see it, it will be dangerous if it ends up in a different place. Should I only count on the sound then? But that alone won't help, I won't be able to aim like that. I'll be able to tell where the needles are flying, but will I be able to move my body right with my eyes closed? I avoid the needles, and within the gaps, fire off a kemitashi. It's useless. My attack frequency will keep on decreasing. It also has automatic HP recovery, so the fight will be prolonged if this keeps up. Will this be decided at once with a prepared needle in close combat? The opponent's attack power is low but I won't be able to do anything if it comes to a fist fight. It's disadvantageous if I think about being struck while it's hiding in an illusion. I keep my distance from the main body while defending from the flying needles with Kemitashi and my wings. Even if my vision is deceived, it is easy to search for the main body because it is skipping over the blown away needles. In the increasingly violent sandstorm, I can see the figure of the needle camel. I release the Kemitashi all the while and attack it while removing the sand in the vicinity. I kick the ground and spread my wings, flying low towards the opponent while following the wind blades. My body collides with the needle camel from the front. At that moment, the shape of the needle camel sways. I slip through the needle camel as is without minding the distortion and fly straight. As I thought, what I saw was just the mirage of the needle camel. You may be able to mislead the direction but you cannot deceive the depth. It seems such wisdom is also in the needle camel, but I'm a former human being. I can check if it is an illusion with status check. I won't lose in wisdom with a beast. No, it's a plant. Which do you prefer? A sand tower penetrates just behind me. It seems that it planned to lure me in and stab me with the clay when I stopped in front of the needle camel illusion. I will not get tricked the same way again. I will give you a kemitashi. The blade of wind scattered the sandstorm, the noise got thinner, the location of the needle camel that was hidden came into view using presence sense. Let's check its status. You can't hide if I know where you are. Definitely its main body. I release the kemitashi towards the needle camel's head while I jump. The needles that protected the right of its head splashes around. I stretch out my arms into the air, put my hands on the right of its head, and dig my claws into the needle camel's head. I grasp it tight and twist its head around while doing a cartwheel. Normal skill neck breaker LV change from 2 to 3. The head of the needle camel flew away and the liquid inside spew up. While landing and looking back, the huge body of the needle camel collapses with a huge thud. 504 experience points obtained, title skill, walking egg activated, gained 504 more points. The value was pretty high. 
As expected, high LV enemies are worth aiming for. Although, I don't want to meet with the huge centipede again. Evil Plague Dragon, SLV has risen from 22 to 29. It's a nice feeling. Well, how do I collect the contents of the Needle Camel? Chapter 119 Kuh <laughs> 119 Cacti Dismantling My LV has gone up, I should confirm my status for the time being. I rush ya? Race, Evil Plague Dragon State, Normal LV, 29 75 HP, 182-293 Mepe, 41-213 Prezece Attack, 266. Defense, 191. Mana, Seratus de la Pan Puluh Dua. Speed, 172. Rank B. Characteristic Skill. Dragon Scale, LV5 God's Voice, LV4 Gurisha Language, LV3 Flight, LV5 Dragon Scale Powder, LV4 Dark Attribute, LV Evil Dragon, LV Automatic HP Recovery, LV3 Present Sense, LV2. Resistance Skill Physical Resistance, LV4 Fall Resistance, LV5 Hunger Resistance, LV4 Poison Resistance, LV5 Loneliness Resistance, LV6 Magic Resistance, LV3 Dark Attribute Resistance, LV3 Fire Attribute Resistance, LV2 Fear Resistance, LV2 Oxygen Deficiency Resistance, LV3 Paralysis Resistance, LV2 Normal Skill Roll, LV6 Status Check, LV6 Scorching Breath, LV5 Whistle, LV1 Dragon Punch, LV3 Plague Breath, LV3 Poison Fang, LV3 Paralysis Claw, LV4 Dragon Tail, LV1 Roar, LV2 Star Fall, LV2 Nutcracker, LV3 Human Transformation Technique, LV4 Akimaitashi, LV2 Neck Breaker, LV3 Title Skill Son of the Dragon King, LV, Walking Egg, LV, Klutz, LV4, Fool, LV1, Infighter, LV4, Pest Killer, LV3, Liar, LV2, Evasion King, LV2, Spirit Relief, LV6, Tiny Hero, LV5, Path of Evil, LV6, Disaster, LV5, Chicken Runner, LV2, Chef, LV4, Mean King, LV4, Guts, LV2, Big Eater, Giant Killing, LV1, Ceramic Craftsman, LV4, Boss of the Crowd, LV1, Laplace's Interference Authority. LV1. Umfumf, it rose quite nicely. Although it feels like it's getting harder to raise it compared to before. Will the next evolution come after 46 more? There should be a few more evolutions to choose from, right? Even though I didn't feel quite right choosing an evil plague dragon. Well, it can't be helped now. I have to try to raise my skill LVs of Spirit Relief and Tiny Hero. Because of a Spirit Relief, the acquisition condition for Restoration Magic was relaxed. This will let the ball rabbit teach me rest. My HP is fine, but my MP consumption was pretty large. It must have been because I was constantly firing off Kemaitashi. I didn't mind it since it was a fight to the death, but I should pay a little more attention next time. I don't want to run empty if it comes to an emergency. It wasn't a challenging opponent, but it may have been frightening if I were to get a direct hit from Clay. Well, what am I supposed to reflect on here? If you collect the possessions of the cactus, it will be all better. I take care not to get pricked as I pull out the needles from the body of the needle cactus. After roughly pulling them out, I separate the leg and the larger bump parts. When disassembling the body it's best to be careful as it will evaporate if it's exposed to the sunlight. After I return home with this, I will also want bring Nina and the ball rabbit back. Ah, even though I caught such a big prey, it's almost dry already. If I bring Nina and the ball rabbit, I will keep the center of the giant cactus for myself. It seems a little hard, but I'll be able to use the skin as a bed as I did for Nina before if I peel off the layer of needles. It's better than sleeping on sand. There's a little problem after the dismantling was done. I have no means to carry it. If I roll it with my arms I might as well have just left it here as it will spill everywhere. It will take a while to walk with it since I went out even farther than I originally planned. I can't be helped I guess. I'll stuff it in my mouth and roll. It may be a bit frustrating, but I can't have my belly on my back. It's ridiculous but I have to make sure it keeps its moisture. With a mouth stuffed with cactus, I use roll to move back to the place I left the ball rabbit. This is quite painful. It's hard to breath, and the skin of the cactus is piercing my skin inside my throat, ah, uh, I'll vomit at this rate. Oh, I accidentally swallowed a little bit. It went up my nose. Ildi, evildi. A stop. 
After struggling for a bit, I managed to find my way back to the trail I left with rolling. I almost died twice today. I found Nina immediately. I want to lay down the cactus remains in the little hole the ball rabbit made. But I don't see the ball rabbit around. Since my mouth is still blocked from before and my voice won't come out, I lightly stamped the ground to call out. There was a little stirring nearby as the sand moved and the ball rabbit appeared from inside. A tail like that of a shrimp made of sand was peeping out of the ball rabbit's mouth. Staring still, the tail retracts back into its mouth. The ball rabbit moves its cheeks that looks like a chestnut and chews and swallows with a gulp. Then a fuhi comes out as if nothing happened. Looking like it could be bodily fluids, the mouth was slightly stained with a splash of green. The ball rabbit is quite strong despite how it looks. Its LV even went up by one. I intended to escort you back, but I guess it was diving around and hunting for food. Oh yeah. I guess the area is safe as a result, so I won't mind it. Pefu pefu. The ball rabbit rushes happily to my feet. It was like a daughter who welcomes back their father after a long time away in a single parent household. I'll say this first, I wonder what life was like in my previous one. After, putting effort into the back by my teeth, I face downward and spit out what was in my mouth onto the ground. Out came a mountain of cactus painted in my saliva. The ears of the ball rabbit stood up for a moment before they hang back down, as if it just suffered an intense shock. After that, I put some effort into my ear and point towards my back. I have a wound there from when I was stabbed previously. It was hard I tell you. Hard. But now there is a mountain of cactus in a place far from here. But don't worry I will take you there soon. Chapter 120 Kuhu. 120 The Evil Dragon, Cat Person and Ball Rabbit I cut the cactus remains into pieces with the tips of my nails to make it easier to eat. I collected and arranged them on top of the cactus skin so as not to get them dirty, avoiding the ones glazed in my saliva as much as possible. Seeing the ball rabbit approaching I use my tail and secure it in place. Normal skilled dragon tail LV increased from 1 to 2. Is it even possible to do such a thing? I should use my tail more often. Pefu. Pefu. The ball rabbit starts hitting my foot with its ears. Endure me. I could eat it so easily, as if it was part of my saliva. Pefu. The ball rabbit drops its ears in disappointment. While it was resentfully looking at me, I dragged my body and approached the mountain of saliva glazed cactus. Should I eat it after all? No, I don't hate its guts after all. Nina woke up in the meantime. Looking at me, she let out a ahinya and retreated. Ha! I tried to call out, but as soon as Nina heard it she screamed Anaya, so I closed my mouth. I show that I'm cutting the cactus and desperately arrange them with my toe, and laugh with a full smile. Perhaps it would have been better to just slightly narrow my eyes a bit instead. Nina looks at me and open her cat eyes in a strange way, and then turns her eyes towards the skin of the cactus that she's laying on. Then she turns her eyes towards me again. Anyway, so as to not be intimidating, I curl up on the spot and lower my line of sight. Um, maybe, you want me to accept it. Nia? It seems that my intention got through. When I nodded a few times, Nina laughed a little. It seems that the tension faded a bit. Oh, thank you, Naya. Tears came to my eyes when I heard Nina say so. To say thank you, there are only two people to say such words to me in this world. By instinct, I emotionally stand up. Because I suddenly moved, Nina's body trembled from being scared, and she put up her arm in front of my body. Ha, this wasn't very wise to do. The ball rabbit spits out the skin of the cactus that had been in its mouth and goes over towards Nina while dragging its ears. What is a ball rabbit, what are you going to do? When the ball rabbit gets to her side, it slowly lowers Nina's raised arm. Ball rabbit? Are you the dragon's emergency food? No. What? I won't do something like that. I shake my head in full force. Pefu pefu. The ball rabbit bounces at Nina's feet. While struggling a bit, Nina stretches her hands towards the ball rabbit and holds it up. The ball rabbit sits in the arms of Nina, it doesn't look too bad. Wow, how cute. Nina's stiff body loosens up a bit. The ball rabbit looks at me with a proud face. It was good to deal with Nina's nervousness, but why do I feel something's not right? Ball rabbit, haven't you tried to eat Nina before? Looks are important after all. I wonder if I should have aimed to be like that instead in my evolutions. I would have liked to be a fluffy dragon. A sheep dragon or a cloud dragon, something like that. 
I recall all the wasteful evolutions and titles I gained, ha, huh, it's useless to think about it now. What can I even aim for now at this point? Is there anything? Should I eat a sheep every day? I know that Nina will stiffen up again if I approached, so I decided to create a little distance. As soon as I opened up about 10 meters, I quickly recommended the cactus with my hand. Nina should be thirsty by now. Still she doesn't approach the cactus, it seems she is still cautious of me. Even though she said thank you a little while ago, I wonder if she feels awkward dining with a dragon. Nina timidly bows to me. She gets closer to the cactus and takes a hold of one while looking at me as if asking. I'm not making you eat so you can fatten up you know. You can be sure of it. I have never eaten any humans. Nina pulls in the cactus but she doesn't start eating it. It seems that since I was the one who brought it, she is doubtful whether it's really food? But, it smells so sweet, if you are thirsty and hungry it's best to eat. Is it just because you're afraid of me? Pefew. The ball rabbit rubs against Nina's feet and lets out a cry. Then the ball rabbit gently looks at me and narrows its eyes while shaking its head a little. Oh, now that I'm looking at it, Nina's movements have become stiff, maybe because I was staring at her. I was getting you are staring too much, and there's too much pressure because you keep staring, indications from the ball rabbit. I moved my gaze away, and Nina finally brought a piece of the cactus to her mouth. Hmm, seems like this is the first time Nina has eaten cactus, after having taken a bite she started blinking and her eyes rounded. Well it is pretty delicious. It's impossible to not be surprised. As I guessed, she was quite hungry, she's biting at it full of vigor. The ball rabbit also started eating a little bit of the food, but it helped to alleviate Nina's cautiousness, did you think I wouldn't notice? When Nina finishes eating, should I talk with her using human transformation technique, and ask her where she wants to go from here? I'll do that next. Maybe. It does consume a lot of MP though. It won't be good if it becomes empty again. Well, should I eat the remains that are covered in my spit? Thinking back to it. It's from that time. After all I don't feel like eating my own saliva. Looking at it while thinking of what had happened, it looks more dirty than necessary. Does the bacteria start to grow on it as soon as it touches the air? I did not think about it when I did it to the ball rabbit. Was it actually really bad? Sorry, ball rabbit. But I should eat even if I think it's disgusting. I'll give it a try, but only a little.